Okay, so we're we're gathered via Zoom um, for Sculpture Forum to talk about uh, the three um, things that Carol Bove has on in New York at the moment: uh, installation at the outside the Met, uh, and two shows, one uptown and one downtown, both at the Zwerner Gallery. Uh, and I'm here with the usual crew, Jock Ireland, Brant Junsu, and this has all been beautifully filmed for us by Rachel Bolander, who is also overseeing this Zoom and who will also edit our conversation and put it out for everybody to see. So thank you, Rachel, for this wonderful work. Um, so, ah, uh, this is this is a, a you know a tremendous amount of work that Carol Bove is offering to viewers right now. Um, I think the Met installation is up until November, but I believe the two shows, the two gallery shows, close um, within a week of our discussion or so. Um, all the works of sculpture in these three shows or three displays. Uh, comprise very similar elements. Um, a, 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 a square steel uh, tube uh, that has been uh, crushed, um, manipulated as though it were a very fluid, soft, easily transformable material. Uh, combined with, in one case, some some polished, in, in the case of the Met show, some um, polished discs, and in the case of the Uptown show, some very highly finished uh, small discs. And in the case of the Downtown show, some massive inch thick steel plates that are curved and welded together. And so you have this combination of soft and hard elements in all of this work. Um, and uh, it offers itself differently in each case, I think. I mean, I, I, I don't want to say too much, but for me, the, 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 the ambition is enormously impressive. Uh, and, and, you know, the, the massive size of the works in the downtown show and the massive size of the works outside the Met, um, you know, are, are, are um, yeah, it almost feels overwhelming. Um, the, 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 all of the work seems to, in some way, to me, my mind, not everybody else thinks, offer itself as, as a kind of a metaphor for, I couldn't help but seeing it in a, as kind of figurative in a way. Um, and I'll say more about that maybe, but, uh, but let, let's hear from somebody else. I have a certain argument with it. And it amounts to perceiving these things um, as tokens of a more direct experience. And I'm aware of the, uh, the artist program and that it's a kind of, <clears throat> you know, a critique, if not appreciation of sculpture of the past and of, uh, you know, the conditions of exhibition. But for me, you know, those conditions of exhibition just don't matter so much. I, I can't help thinking as a kind of reflex of when I see something ancient or modern or, or brand new, I imagine it in fragments or, you know, discovered out of context. And my question is always, what does it communicate all alone? Um, outside of every kind of crutch and prop and, you know, pedestal it ever had before. And when I do, I take these things as tokens of a kind of sculpture that they aren't. 
that has sort of, uh, you know, used figurative art. I think a lot of these are like, remind me so strongly of Bernini models, you know, as well as um, the Suvro, Doyle, Caro, Chamberlain, sometimes David Smith. And having that referent kind of absolves them of a directness of their own through which flows uh, personal experience, a direct response to the outside world by the artist in person. And, and without that, without that kind of um, risk-taking, perhaps awkward um, investment, personal investment, that, that directness, um, I think they, they verge instantly. You know, a, a, and this is speaking apart from the artist's own program of, you know, reference and critique, I think they they move instantly into a kind of terrain of decor in which there's very little risk. And the, um, you know, the viewer and the, uh, you know, the buyer, the collector is a, absolved of all the kind of embarrassments that go with direct experience and speaking for oneself and uh, one's own words and one's own attempted language. So you, you're reading you're reading the the work very much as commentary. Yeah. Exactly, as a kind of a, a commentary on the direct expressions of others. And I think, you know, there's a, there's a kind of a, an electric lightning in an artwork that can strike anywhere, no matter or despite the program. And of course, some of them, you know, to, to my mind, almost against <clears throat> or tangentially to their own program could be quite moving. But for me, this kind of program is um, not appealing. The, 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 I mean, I'm, I'm not in any sense trying to argue with you, uh, Brent, um, about that kind of reading of the work, although my immediate response to it, it you know, and I mean, I too am aware of, of you know, of this element within um, Carol Bobo's practice of, of you know, the, the interest in and the, 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 the uh, concern with the, you know, forms of display and uh, engagement with uh, kind of historical uh, interest. Um, but all of this work seems to be a very consistent body of work. I mean, there isn't, there is, you know, there is, there is uh, such uh, uh, regularity of, of means that, that it's difficult to think that any particular piece can be seen as uh, referencing some uh, you know, some other particular historical works or conditions. I mean, you know, all of the work seems in some way to be made as if there is a kind of formula. Um, you know, we take a hard element, usually a disc, or in the case of the downtown show, these steel plates, and we take a, a, a crumpled element, which references something soft and malleable, uh, flexible, movable, uh, and we put the two together uh, in various ways. And the discs, uh, any disc, depending on, you know, context, 
it almost certainly can be read, you know, as a figurative element as a head. Uh, and I found myself doing that in the case of the Uptown show, that these, these works often seem to offer themselves as, you know, uh, torsos, um, head and shoulders, uh, sometimes a head with hair or something, mm -hmm. uh, head and an arm or and uh, in, in the case of downtown show, the hard elements, you know, it's too, too, it was such a cliche, but so easy to read the hard, heavy steel elements as masculine, and the, the more fluid, crumpled elements as feminine, and then to read the two things together as a dancing couple. Um, and I found myself enjoying that in terms not of the individual work so much as the whole room began to feel like a ballroom and, and uh, I don't know about the title of that show does anybody know it the title of the show is chimes at, the chimes at midnight is that a it's at midnight sorry chimes at midnight chimes at midnight is that is that a it sounds like the title of a Edgar Allan Poe story or something does anybody know what it is well there's the the Orson Welles Falstaff movie chimes at midnight yes it's derived from uh uh, what is it? Three historical plays of Shakespeare: the the the, the, the John Falstaff character and the Prince Hal moving through all of them. Uh huh. I wonder if that's a reference. We're now looking at images of the of the works at the Met, um, which seemed I thought to occupy. I mean. What an undertaking to try to put something in those niches outside the Met Museum, mm. uh, you know, obviously intended for statues. Um, and, and they're big. Um, and, I, you know, it's, it, because they're in these niches and they're up out of reach and, and, and uh, yeah, it's impossible. One can only have a very limited view of these works, frontal essentially. Mm. Um, and on the one hand, they seem to offer, they seem to occupy those spaces quite well, I felt. Um, yeah. If that was, you know, the, the, you know, the primary concern was to fill that space with something that would animate it. Um, I thought they did that well. Um, again, I thought that the, you know, the, the disjunction for me between the regularity of the discs always uh, parallel to or at, at 90 degrees to the building and with the four pieces, so mm -hmm. eight, eight discs, eight, you know, so all the variations possible within the eight, you know, eight discs. Um, uh, it, again, it began to feel, uh, you know, predetermined in a way that I, I, I didn't enjoy because the, 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 the sense I had was that the animated element, the crumpled steel element that, that these discs are attached to, um, you know, seem to kind of like want to be thought of as having been done, you know, randomly almost, uh, almost arbitrarily, uh, uh, but with, with a, you know, an implication of spontaneity. Um, yeah. That you can't, you know, I mean, the machinery required to, to uh, manipulate this, Deal on that scale is quite something, and um, you know, I mean, they're impressive. Um, but I, I found myself getting irritated by the sense that the discs themselves was, were placed in such a predictable way, and 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 so that there, it, the disc yeah. relationship to the crumpled steel pieces seemed to have no real uh, necessity or or relevance. There were, you know. The two elements were were put together in a predetermined way, and not not because of how they might fit together or might work best together or might animate each other best. 
that was my that, that was my problem throughout was this sense that there was a that there was a um, you know uh, plan. I found all the work at, at the museum and in the galleries, uh, you know, obviously intelligent. And it chooses intelligently a number of smart boxes and checks them. I just, I don't find that it's doing a lot more. I, I think as much as I like her work, um, from like a formal standpoint, I wish there was more tension or more uncertainty with it. Yeah. Or any uncertainty or any tension. Yeah, exactly. I, I was trying to be diplomatic and, you know, even with the, the discs at the Uptown show and, and, and I like the way that she was playing with it with steel, but she was making it look softer and these discs kind of sink into it. So there's no um, there, there's no tension, there's no uncertainty. Um, like there's nothing to really hang on to with them. No, they're, they're, no. They're, they're just, and deliberately so. There's a kind of conversation between what's spontaneous, what's spontaneous and what's arbitrary. And, and you know, I think what's supposed to be spontaneous ends up feeling arbitrary. Yeah, um, but it's still, it, it, but in somehow at the same time, it seems a little overworked um, or too considered. I don't know. I, like I said, I, I liked it because it's appealing, not because I think a lot of it would be considered good formal sculpture that really held my interest. Well, there, 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 there's, there's also, a, I mean, when you say overworked, I mean, there is, in, 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 in terms of an aspect of the work is that it, 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 it claims a kind of perfection, certainly yeah. in, in the way it's finished. Um, mm -hmm. um, but even like the folds, like on this one, everything is just... Right, which is sort of weird if you're crumpling up metal because that's supposed to give you the element of chance. You know, it's just going to do something if you crumple it, but instead, I mean, it, it looks very planned and very manipulated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the discs become just a cliche, don't they? I mean, they just kind of... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, take the disc off, and and it begins to be more interesting. Yeah, and without them, you've got sort of a busted jug. Yeah. I see loads of references, you know, to things that I care about. Um, you know, for one, you know, I, I could perceive some of these museum pieces in sort of the way that I look at the angel and the geometric solid in Durer's Melancholia. But that, that, uh, that rhyme is just as far as it goes. I mean, beyond that, there's a sort of like a, a kind of a, empty melancholy feeling of missing everything else that went with the earlier artwork. And it's like, a, you know, you can grant it a certain kind of modern era melancholy, you know, at, at all the things that we miss and all the things that we cannot quite go through with again, you know, and a kind of a, a vanished humanism. But I just, I find that also superficial. I, I'm sort of going along with uh, what both Brant and, and Garth are saying, but um, I, I do think the, uh, the display at the, at the Met is, uh, is inspired it's it's um 
uh, it it works um, in ways that the other two uh, shows don't. And uh, uh, and. I, I don't very, I, I don't really get the Chimes of Midnight um, title for the show downtown, but this, the show at the Met um, has an interesting title or the display at the Met, whatever you want to call it, the, the Met event uh, is called something like uh, the seances aren't helping. And I don't, I don't, uh, have any special insight into that title, but it it seems to me, I, I read it as uh, a, a reference to early 20th century abstraction and the spirituality, uh, Hilma off uh, Klimt and whatnot. Uh, and that sense of uh, of frustration uh, there are just there's a complexity of feeling in the work uh, at the Met that, as I say, I see as inspired um, and and sort of successful, but successful as a kind of failure, uh, and that's what I'm trying to get at with mm. the complexity of feeling. Um, and that, and I, you know, I don't really want to compare. I, I well, I do want to bring in um, Michelangelo's uh, Rondanini Pietà, and wow. and that sense of rejecting, uh, rejecting something, and it and going back to. Uh, uh, well, just that the sense of the, that work coming out of frustration with uh, a, a certain way of doing things and um, uh, sort of, well, failing and succeeding at the same time. Uh, that seems to, it seems to me that that's happening in the, in, in the work at the Met. Uh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not a father. I don't have any children, but I, I, I sometimes think of, uh, it, what if I had a child and what if the child came up to me and said, uh, you know, daddy, draw me a picture of a horsey. And if that happened to me, I, I I wouldn't know what to do. I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to. I would want to please my child, but I just wouldn't know how to pick up a pencil and draw a horse for the child. Um, and I think something like this is happening at the Met. Uh, so it, that Carol wants to do something. Uh, to please the people at the Met, and in a way, can't. Uh, and yet, she goes ahead and she does this, and it it works, uh, even though it's sort of just a wreckage. Uh, but it it works, a and and there's something not only. <clears throat> do sort of I is there a connection between me and Carol in this analogy that I'm uh, coming up with? Uh, but the sense in which the Met, the people at the Met, or whoever commissioned this, the sense in which they're little children and asking for something that they don't really know what they want. Uh, it, 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 it's, I don't know, I, the, this thing at the mat seems to me to be a really uh, significant event in contemporary art uh, in the world today. 
That's... I think it. I think the uh, the installation is everything the Met would have wanted. Um, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's so neatly fulfilled in terms of design. Um, I just I just don't find it having the other hot qualities of you know, a, a discovered plastic artwork. It reminds me in a sense of the garden projects of Noguchi that seemed, that seemed to many, you know, terribly cool, but I think are really, uh, I think in real terms, they're far more uh, emotionally complex and, and emotion laden. Um, that this seems to be, you know, almost a pure exercise in uh, program and design. Well, that it's bringing in Noguchi is, uh, you know, maybe better than bringing in Michelangelo. But, but again, the there's a big, you know, the mat itself counts in this. Um, uh, uh, you know, the, there's the mat, the building itself, and the uh, uh, and and the publicity things that are up in you know the those big signs of the, of mm -hmm. the show. You know, that, it 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 <laughs> all works together in a uh, way that lifts it above the shows in the galleries uh and, yeah, and it's yeah. the complexity of the feeling and and it's uh it's our feeling at this moment uh you know what is art going to do for us now well i mean you 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 point into the fact that the the, the thing at the met is a you know, a public event. Uh, it's a major public event. It, to, to I'm very brave of, of of Carol to you know to have. A, I mean, not that any of us would reject the opportunity. I imagine, but 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 nevertheless, it's it's quite uh, um, I, I guess challenging opportunity to to you know to fill those niches outside those four niches outside the Met. Um, but I mean, I, 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 I don't get the complexity of feeling um, uh, that you're, you're experiencing, Jock. I mean, I do think they are, you know, they occupy those spaces well in, in that, you know, they fill them and animate them. But, but beyond that uh, and, and beyond the sense that one can kind of conjure with the idea that these are seated figures, um, yeah, I don't know where this seated figure business. I mean, I you know that's in the back of all our minds, maybe. But there, it's a tangle of steel, and then a you know perfect disc mixed in and mixed in in a very sort of naive kind of way. Uh, it, it's um, it's a you know, it's not a sophisticated uh, sculpture, but yeah, and, and, it's, and, a, it's a juxtaposition between something, you know, as you say, a tangle of crumpled steel and then a predictably placed uh, discs um, in relation to the, to that crumpled steel. I mean, it seems it seems almost to be. Um, you know, denial of feeling. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the strongest feeling that I get from them is a sort of frustrated, forbidden, um, you know, removed, divorced, um, denied feeling, denial of feeling. I mean, it comes back, I think, to what you started started us with, Rand, about the sense in which there's a, a, 
almost a kind of a, 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 an assertion that it is impossible to convey you know through these means uh something meaningful about one's uh experience of the world uh, yeah and that that and and it's not working but paradoxically at the met it works because it's not working it it's uh yeah it it uh it, you know i i i don't think i'm trying too hard or you know trying to be nice or whatever and it, it that thing no, at the met you may be onto something, Jock. I don't. I don't know. You maybe. I mean, I'm. I'm finding myself thinking about the fourth print in Trafalgar Square in London. You, you know about that program where mm -hmm. there are four prints, uh, three of which have, you know, traditional uh, figures, a whole, men on horses or something on them, and the fourth print never got. So it's been empty for many years, and and in the last, I don't know maybe 20 years or something, they've commissioned a sculptor or an artist to put something on it. Uh, and various people have, um, but, but the, 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 it tends to get you, those commissions, the artists tend to get to, to use it. Um, and maybe this is how they're chosen, I don't know. And I don't know what the approval process is that people have to go through once they make a proposal, or once they're invited and make a proposal, but they tend to use it to make a statement, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, that has some social implication, um, you know, often political. Um, uh, I, 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 and it seems to me that th these, these are the absolute opposite of that. They're non-political, they're non, they do not, they do not. Exactly. Uh, they don't, they don't tell us anything about, you know, the, the, the person who made it. They don't tell us anything oh, about what? No. people who commissioned it. They don't tell us anything about, you know, anything except the, the amount of energy and money that went into the production of them. No, Which no. Considerable. I, sorry? What? what I, well, I, I didn't hear what you said, Brent, but uh, Garth, that, I, that's the... The Trafalgar. I, I'm not. I don't live in London. I, I, I can't. I don't mean to dismiss that uh, project. But I, I've seen a number of the things in photographs, and that, and and even the Wangechi Mutu uh, things that were up at the Met. Uh, uh, I don't know. Whenever they were up at the Met. Uh, well, you know, they, she had work up there that, uh, 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 before Carol Bove, uh, but it, what, it didn't work. It, it wasn't, it, it, it was, it just didn't work. And the Trafalgar Square stuff doesn't work, but this stuff does, or at least for me, and it does because there's no, uh, plan. This is just her sculpture, her sort of inadequate sculpture, but the inadequacy uh, makes it adequate. And there, there, it's direct, it's, there's no color on these, the pieces at the Met. It's, um, it, it's, I, you know, as I say, I'm, uh, and, and it, it almost uh, makes it impossible for me to, sort of see and I, I'm not you know it'll be interesting to see what Carol does next because it uh, it makes the work in the shows uh, look silly to me uh, wow wow I, I can't I can't go there at all I wouldn't make any you know any major distinction between these things at the Met and the works in the shows they, they seem more of a piece to me yeah, well, that, that you know, that's fine. I, I, I mean, the, you know, the, the, the Met, things at the Met are different in that they are, you know, specifically located in that in that space. But, yes, exactly. But, but then I did find that the, 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 the downtown show 
uh, you know, the, w once I started taking in that whole room uh, as, as, as an entity rather than trying to kind of focus my attention. I mean, I did find the downtown show, you know, um, for me, much the most engaging. Um, the, 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 my, and my, my experience ended up being about my movement around the room and my movement around those pieces. And I began to find myself, you know, experiencing the whole thing as, as, as if I was on a dance floor. I, yeah. I, that's not to say that I thought the individual works themselves were, you know, were, were, were I mean, I could not find myself, uh, uh, you know, thinking. Well, one of the things I do when I find myself in a show like this, where there's a body of work that, you know, that in some ways all seem to be made with the same uh, basic kind of formula is do I you know do do I find some more successful more engaging um, more fulfilling than others and in this case I found it impossible to feel that one work was you know significantly sufficiently significantly different from another to be for me to find myself I, I like this one better than I like that one I find this one uh, you know annoying because of this whereas that one I it, you know they all seem to end up to being you know of a piece uh and so I, I you know that was when I found myself thinking well let's just take them as one piece mm. I think of this as a as a, 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 a you know an installation um and something happening in the room and that began to be you know uh, a much more a much richer experience It's just that so much uh, a, a gallery, a, you know, removed from the world. Whereas the Met, up at the Met, it's yeah, it's out there, uh, and uh, Rachel talks about sculpture belonging out in the wild. And I was just thinking, but if your reaction or Jock's reaction would have been different had these larger metal pieces been out in the wild versus in a gallery space. I, because it was done so industrially and in such a big room, I agreed with Garth. Like I saw it as one piece and they all were kind of like a ballroom. Um, and I didn't get much of a sense of separation. Um, yeah, and the room is slightly darkened. It's, it's painted, you know, the walls have been painted almost black. And so the, the lighting in the room is very uh, subtle. Uh, yeah, and with the, the windows on top, like, I, I didn't really get the sense that I was in a gallery. Like I thought it was one step removed from that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it's a completely artificial environment uh, where there's this stuff called sculpture that but, but come on, Jack. The, the Met is an artificial environment. I mean, it's a man-made. It's a man-made environment. It's not. It, it just happens to be accessible to people who come upon it without going through a door. Yeah, and and those sculptures of the Met were specifically made. I mean, you can see they're fitted exactly to fit in that artificial environment. I mean, they might be outside, but they're part and parcel to where they've been placed. But I, I agree with Jock. The the architecture of the Met, you know, the, the big volumetric imposing forms of the columns, for instance, that these things are niched into, and the academic allegorical sculpture above are really of a piece with how you uh, appreciate the, the steel works. And the, the steelworks, I mean, the, the metaphor is that these pieces that go into those spaces stand in for unfinished business of the 19th century, that there would have been colossal standing figures there and allegorical groups on the um, entablatures above those columns where the uncarved blocks are. So I, I think there's a very direct connection between 
uh, figural, um, figurally expressive and, um, you know, allegorical sculpture and these pieces. And that, that frustrated melancholy, which is the, you know, the best feeling I can find there comes from that, the absence of that. And the comparative um, barrenness of- I, I'm sorry, Brian, the absence of what exactly? The, the absence of, um, you know, uh, a more um, legible rhetorical statement. And, and a more kind of, uh, you know, outward rhetorical statement that the, that the old figures up above have. I mean, they're, they're threadbare, they're, they're artistically weak, they're, you know, they have very little to say of their own, but they come from and refer to a tradition that goes back, you know, the, the elegant antecedent would be the Sistine ceiling you know, the, the, the prophets and the Sibyls and the Sistine ceiling. They're very weak echoes of that. And the, for me, the, the barren melancholy of the Beauvais installation is that that speech has become completely vacant. Yeah, and, but there's still... It, you know, she's she's avoided the risk of making a statement that in 10 years could offend somebody. But she's also avoided uh, the opportunity to say something of her own other than I can't do this anymore or it can't be done or it was faulty. Well, yes. Yeah, so what? You say anything, it's faulty. Shakespeare is faulty. Well, it, it's it brings it, you know it it's not a, only about looking backward. The, I mean, the, those um, the discs kind of turn the whole building into a cash register, and and the discs could be silver dollars, and and, and that is it, you know that's the moment we're living in. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's the sculpture is alive to today. It seems. Well, I agree. To me. Yeah. Uh, so what what I'm what I'm hearing you two, both Jock and Brandt, saying is that the context here, the context of the Met. Um, it, it, it enables these things to take on a, uh, a, a meaning, a significance, a presence that, they, that, that is given to them, you know, partly through the, the, the absence of, of internal content in the work itself, but is given meaning by where it's placed. Is that, is that what I'm hearing? By the fact yeah. that it's at the Met, that it's occupying these niches, that it's, you know, that the, 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 the relationship, the context is, well, the context is always half the meaning, but in here it's particularly relevant. But I, I don't think it's... Itself is not imposing, is not bringing to the Met something that, you know, but, but is, is opening up a kind of space where the Met can give meaning to the tangle of metal and the discs. Yeah, and it's it's not just a matter of of her of her work accepting something from the architecture and from the the architectural sculpture. She's deliberately engaged with it, and she's actually. I mean, the, one of the ways I think of the discs is that it, these colossal seated figures are holding up mirrors to the outside world. You know, it's an architectural commission. It's not, um, you know, elective work, speculative work out of a studio that the artist is making for themselves. It's it's a commission with a with a a place and a function and a budget. But my God, I mean, what a budget! What a commitment! 
um, you know, it, it, it touches on the same uh, practical and conceptual matters of acceptance, obedience, compliance, and, and complicity with the official world with the state that academic sculpture had and that it's blamed for today. What's blamed for what? A academic sculpture is blamed for its, uh, you know, uh, hand and glove relationship to the powers that were. Well, it's, it's expression of an it, ideology. <clears throat> it, it's complicity with, 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 you know, with the status quo and with the, whatever the ruling ideology happened to be. Um, and the program here, I think, tries to have it both ways that there's some uh, idea of it being a, a, you know, a critique or response or dialogue with the institution. Um, you know, there's, uh, you know, monumental sculpture, early modern and earlier that, that one can say the same thing. I mean, <clears throat> Rodin's Balzac was, uh, you know, was such a yeasty response to its own world that it was rejected for, you know, 50 to 100 years. So, you, I mean, what happens to these works and take them out of their niches and, I mean, do they, I mean, do they have some um, significance beyond their placement? I mean, if we take them out of the, away from the Met and put them, you know, in David Smith's field, are they, what, what happens to them? That's a good question. I, I would guess they'll go from here to other architectural contexts and, and probably do very well in the same way. Yeah, but that's not the question I'm asking. The question I'm asking is, is the extent of, of the value you're finding in them, both of you. Mm -hmm. it, 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 to what extent is it dependent on, on, on the you know, on their relationship to the institution that yeah, they I mean, it's, it's a good question. Like, or is it just crumpled steel with some mirror discs? If it's not at the Met, if it's not mirroring some of the figures that are above them. Um, I mean, you, you said that the sculpture itself formally is weak. I mean, so yeah, what does happen to it, even if it's in a different place? Maybe it's an unfair question because they are made for those places and maybe seen from the other side, they, you know, they don't, they don't hold up, but their relationship, I guess what I'm asking is their relationship to the Met is largely metaphorical rather than formal, isn't it? I mean, they're not, mm -hmm. they don't have a, a, a very clear, we've come to the end of the, they don't have a very clear formal relationship to the architecture, um, other than in a, in, 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 a, in a way animating the space. Anyway, I, uh, we haven't spoken much about the, the Uptown show, which is, um, some, somebody mentioned cash registers, and I, I thought this was, of the other three shows, in a way, the one that seemed to me to be most kind of commercial, uh, the, the kind of sense of almost childlike quality about these pieces, and the color, um, seem to be, you know, there's a, a kind of a, a, an appeal to them that I thought was um, mm. quite different from the work at the Met or from work downtown. The, the, the sweet, you know, the mm -hmm. sweet, they're charming almost um, and, and appealing. They make some kind of, I felt, you know, it's like some kind of um, appeal of a, you know, a small child or, or a friendly animal. Yeah, there's a, was a nice Albers up in the gallery when I was there. And yeah, me, yeah, I, yeah. Oh. And it, it really <laughs> uh, affected the, the, the work. I, 
Well, I, what affected the, this for me as much as anything was going next door and seeing David Smith. I mean, yeah. you know, where where there is there is a the engagement is of a totally different order. You know, despite the fact that there's a similarity in the materials being used yeah. and, and to some extent the methods being used. I think it, uh, engagement is a a delicious word for it. Um, I mean, there's the physical presence of the artist and intimate physical presence is, um, you know, really so strongly evident in Smith's work. And it's inaccessible to things that are fabricated by others. Yes. Yes, I, I mean, this is the, the part of the issue throughout, isn't it? That the, 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 yeah, yeah. this work is made, you know, can, cannot be made without the use of heavy machinery. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's, uh, you know, an, a, a kind of anonymity is, uh, you know, a core element of, of all these pieces. Yes. Uptown and down gallery and, and at the Met. Yes. Yes, anonymity in, in terms of, of, of a kind of hands-on presence of the author, but, 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 uh, but not anonymity in terms of a style, um, yeah. in terms of, of a manner of, of approach, a way of going about things. Um, that's that you know that that's there's a signature there but it's a uh, a signature and an author that in, in conceptually metaphorically and physically is without touch you know there's there's literally no physical contact between these works and their author no fingerprint yeah no, no, heaven forbid there would be a fingerprint uh, on these things. Um, and my sense is that that fingerprint would be a kind of embarrassment. Well, it would be out of place. It would be out of place. I mean, it would simply be inappropriate. Um, it, it, it would feel like a, a, an error, wouldn't it? A mistake to yeah. it, as if, as if the, the, the machinery had broken down in some way. Yeah, but the, the machinery is an extension of her hand. I appreciate what you say, John. Getting involved with, with, with issues that we associate with sculpture in terms of mass and weight and space and material and materiality and, uh, you know, and so on and so on. Uh, but, but, uh, but it all comes across a little bit as the idea of it when I encounter the work yeah. rather, than act, rather than a real experience of it, you know? I mean, I mean, those early Caro works, you know, when he was having to manipulate those heavy steel girders himself, those heavy steel elements himself, having to find ways to jack something up prop it up and put block it up with bits of wood and hold it there while he welded something or bolted something. Those early steel pieces of cars are so different from the late work, you know, where he has a team of people moving things around for him and holding it up there. And, you know, it's, it feels very different. And this feels like, you know, late car work in a sense, like it's yep. made. Sure, sure. By, by some, by, by, by looking and thinking rather than actually physically manipulating. And getting the feeling into the manipulation. Yeah, I mean, the feeling comes once you start, once you start physically manipulating material, you, you can't help but, 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 but be you know, in, in embodying something in it. Yeah. Like it or not. I mean, I, you know, I mean, this is there's an issue here, isn't there, of success, and 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 the demands uh, of success, and the need for, uh, you know, uh, 
kind of production line. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, th let's let's leave it there then. As 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 you know, we're we 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 we're looking at the work of somebody of a very you know successful and 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 you know ambitious uh, artist. Um, yeah. And 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 you know maybe the you know the issues that we are having with it are are as much a function of of the way she is negotiating that success and and what what comes with it. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>